Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how I've made this rather adorable bench fold card. I've fallen in love with this and this is actually a card for my dad's birthday. Now I've got the inspiration for this one from Ink Responsibly and also from Jambi on YouTube and this has also been a very highly requested card style for me to make. Loads of you, literally loads, <laughs> have emailed, sent messages whenever I've thrown out kind of a request like post on Facebook. This one always pops up. So I hope you like my version let me show you how I made it. Okay so I used a few different stamps really so I just pulled out different kind of images from each so I used the carrot and the beetroot from the Fuller Lover stamps mixed vegetables. I used the hanging basket and these ones here from the Card Making Magic province collection for the small little watering can here it was from the Apple Blossom Lazy Summer Garden some of these are still available so I will link them below I'm not sure if I'm going to use these in there I have done and that one actually I've done those three that's by Craft Consortium and it was the Herbarian collection I've done this one as well which I'll probably use because I think the proportions of that watering can are better that was a Dovecraft Secret Garden and then I used quite a few from this one it's such a handy little stamp set it was one of the free gifts from Papercraft Essentials it was called Garden Delights and I've used the sign I've used the spade and the fork I've used oh that was it actually I think I was going to use the small fruit and veg there but they're so tiny and you've got the Wellington boot there if you want but I did use a die instead for those and um, I used the obviously the craft shed or dad shed there as well. For the dies, I've used these three here from the birdcage accessories by Card Making Magic and then for well I just used like the grasses here um, I've used these flowers for that kind of little plant tray and I've used the plant pots here yeah, that one as well, those three, I think it was. And that's from Card Making Magic Province Collection. This is a this is to go with the Secret Garden. I used the fork and the trowel there. And that's the Wellington boot that I used. And I may even die cut that one, because I can always add things into it later. And then that window, which is this one here, Card Making Magic Beautiful Day Window. And I just used that piece. You do have the shutters and you also have the flower box as well there for the front. Okay, so that's all of the stamps and dies. So let's get straight into the card. So I'm gonna be, mine wants to be five by seven. So this is a piece of 10 by five. And along the 10 inch side, you want to score at So really simple scoring. I've already inked this up and distressed it just so I can keep the lid, the video as short as possible. And then you're going to do a mountain fold, a valley fold, then another valley fold, and then finish with a mountain fold. And just make sure that you burnish them all really well. Ink them up, you know, if you're doing a similar scene to me, you might be doing yours very girly and you know, yours might be all florals and lighter colours. You might not be doing any distressing at all, but I will be covering all of these panels shortly. Then you need your little stopper piece, and this piece measures five by two. And along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four and a half. And again, just fold and burnish and ink up all of those edges and sides. And then for the actual... I guess the bench part, the bridge part, whatever you want to call it. This is a piece of seven by three and a half. And along that three and a half inch side, you want to score at one and a half. And then pop it back along the seven inch side and you want to score at one and a half, just down to that first score line. And then at five and a half, just down to the first score line. So we're actually going to be cutting away this left and right hand cornered squares here. Again, I've inked up all of that and I will just have to ink up these sides when I've cut into them. I'll also go through the sizes of the mats and layers while I've got my scoreboard here and um, I'll talk you through how I've made this kind of faux, um, I guess, wood effect. Um, it's really easy to do. So this is a piece, this is my main kind of mat layer to go in this section here. Um, rather than doing my normal kind of mat and layer where I come in by a quarter of an inch on all, th you know, all of the sides, I've actually just come in by one eighth of an inch on this because I really do want it to look like this whole thing is just one, you know, piece of wood effect card. So this is a piece of three and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And then I've got four pieces of one and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And they're going to go on your four panels. And you'll just need to do that size again for the back in white so you've got somewhere to stamp your message as well. And then this piece is for the front middle section and this is three and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. 
again as always all the measurements will be in my blog okay so this here was just kind of a it was already a wood kind of effect see there you can just see that's the actual pattern paper and this was from pound world before they closed down i think they've been closed now maybe a year and a half couple of years and um all i then done is i just got my scoreboard and i just randomly scored some lines so you can see there i've got one that's like one eighth of an inch this is about half then three eighths then half then a quarter and so on so i've done them all a bit random and then you want to fold each one so we'll do this one for example and then i've got this little tool which is by dovecraft and it's a distressing tool and it's got little blades in all of the little petals like the the you know i guess the corners of all the petals there or whatever anyway i then went along and just kind of went over it until it exposed the white core color of that card and then just with my blending brush just put some ink on it and just blend over it you can also grab the ink pad and actually directly rub the cardstock onto it and you'll get a real intense you see how intense that is it does kind of um, dry a bit lighter it will all blend in but that's how I got that effect and I think it turned out really well so I just done that on all of those pieces now if you don't have a cardstock that's already got a bit of a grain on it just use the craft card okay um, you still get a really nice effect by adding those score lines and everything so that's what I did to get that effect so I'm going to stick all those down in a moment before we do that we need to cut this piece here so you just want to cut down one of those score lines and then across so you're removing it and I've just taken away the score line now I'm going to ink that all up as well but it just means you'll get a nicer kind of join when we put it all together and again just remove that one there and then I'm just going to ink up all of this and I've actually just had a little idea with this piece because this is going to be the the top of the shed kind of table I'm thinking I don't want it to have that same wood here because that's your shed you know the the actual frame so what I'm going to do instead I'm going to lay this back in here and I'm just going to put a score line about every three eighths of an inch just down to the first score line this is purely decorative but I'm just thinking this will give me a nice kind of wood effect countertop I guess that's what I'm kind of going for I am going to do these all equally kind of reminds me of my granddad's workbench because his is a bit like that and then I can just and then just go over it with the ink I'm going to go quite dark I want this to look you know much darker than the rest of the cardstock I'm actually going to fold it over because that way I can really get into it without going over onto that other bit I'm not bothered about inside of this you're not going to see any of this at all okay but now I think I've got quite a good wooden countertop there so I'm really pleased with that so just you know at least then you get to see how you can create those effects okay so I want to add this one down first of all before I attach the stopper so I think it's just going to be easier to do so so I'm going to use my Kalal glue throughout because it will really add lots of strength okay and then I want to grab two of these and stick these on the middle you know on the inside sections as well or panels because again we need to stick that over it so lay all this down first of all okay for the last ones I'm going to stick this down and then put the panels over the top because I want it to kind of conceal that and just look like you know it's just kind of yeah I just think it, for me I want it to go over you could if you want you know have that depending on the look or the you know the theme that you're doing you could stick them down now and then have that over the top there okay but I'm going to be sticking it down afterwards so now this piece here just want to add glue onto the two side tabs and then you're going to sit it so it this bottom here runs flush with the bottom of the card and butt it right up into that score line here and just fold the whole thing over make sure it is flush there we go and then I can just come over to this side and stick that one over and just keep moving it side to side so it all folds nice and flat but I can see there it doesn't matter which way I go you know the card does fold flat and you can see there there's our stopper okay and then next I'm going to stick this down and you can see it will all line up there 
and when you push that down it will sit on top of that stopper inside. But now we've got our little shed countertop with the, the back bit there, but before I put that down I need to add my window. So I have this here, you may not have this, um, you know, it's just I think it's really nice to, you know, it, it is how it looks for my dad, you know, he's got a, 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 a kind of, you know, workbench and then it's right with the window there, so I just wanted to kind of recreate that, plus when this goes in it will kind of clip, well, possibly, is it going to? Yeah, I think it might just clip underneath the window. I'm not too worried if it didn't, but we'll see when it all goes together. But again, it will just kind of hold that all in place. So what I'm going to do here is you can mark with a pencil if you want. I'm just going to lay this on here, pop my finger kind of there. And you can see roughly, you just want to add your glue, you know, not above this two inches really. Um, otherwise you're, well, I'm going to be covering it all anyway, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference for me but you know depending on how you're decorating yours you may want to just be careful where you add your glue so like so and I'm just going to stick that over so I have actually come a bit high with the glue there but it doesn't like I said it doesn't really matter for me but just get it into its shape because this is exactly seven inches wide so you know it's going to fit in your envelope and then if you just bring it down You'll be able to really put some pressure on there and just make sure that's all nice and secure. Again, I can go that way and it all folds flat as well. Okay, and then that is going to go just there. And I'm thinking I'm going to have mine. It, I thought it might have gone under, but I actually like that that's going to act as like a little bit of a clip for the, the ledge to kind of clip under. So my window comes up a little bit high there. I could, it's not going to interfere with the envelope because your envelopes usually give you an extra quarter of an inch. Um, I'm going to keep it as it is. So whatever, if you are doing something like me, then, you know, if it does come, you might even have the same window. If it comes a little bit higher, I don't think it's really going to matter, but I'm going to line up the bottom of this with the bottom of, with the, you know, the height of the kind of the countertop there but it, you can see it kind of bounces up. If I hold it up, so it, yeah, I mean, it does stay flat actually. See there, it's completely flat, but this will just kind of clip it in place. So I'm gonna just sit it about there and then I can still lift it up to fold everything flat, but it does, yeah, it clips itself underneath the, the bottom of the window there. So at least it would definitely stay down. It actually really then kind of, you know, keeps its shape as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna, Kind of hold that there for a second, like so. While that's drying, I can now stick down these panels here and then this panel, which will go like so. Okay, so that's everything covered. So now it's just down to the decoration. Um, so I've cut this, die cut this trellis here, which is going to go up one of the sides. I'm probably going to trim a bit off the bottom and put a little, um, I've got a little planter here actually. So I'm probably going to have that you know, do something with that along the bottom. I have die cut these trees, all the leaves even, and I love this that I made. I bring it up there, can you see? It's just so cute. It's just little rectangles of craft card. Um, I think I cut three, stuck them on top of each other, then cut some thin strips and just put them on either end. And then I made these like little leather looking handles. I just thinly cut some green card and then these are those flowers from the die set. And the idea is, is that is gonna sit on here and it can kind of hang off the edge because it will all fold flat but I really like that on there I think it looks super cute and then I'm probably gonna have um, maybe these I might have them hung but I'm kind of thinking to keep them just kind of on the the top there like that I really like it I've got my <laughs> dad shed there which I have added some glossy accents to that's gonna probably hang along on that side and I'm just gonna carry on I've got little plant pots there I've got these little there we go, that's better. Aren't they cute? We've just put little wooden, they're just craft sticks and I just inked them up with some brown. I've also got a hanging basket, so I need to think about that as well with that. So we'll see, this might not get added, we're not sure yet, but anyway, I'm gonna pop it on high speed and uh, yeah, have some fun sticking this all down.
so there is the card finished. I absolutely adore it. I am totally in love with it. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this card. So you can see the little sign and the glossy accents. I love the faux glass there as well in the window. It looks really like mottled, like old vintage glass. I've got the Wellington boots. I love these, the little planters there, or the sign, sorry. I've got the little um, beetroot kind of top poking out the plant pot there, hanging basket. And just, I just love it. I just love all the detail. And then on the back, I've just cut a piece of white card, stamped happy birthday, and then I've just used some of the bits I had left over. I've still got a few bits left there, but I'll keep them for another card. And then you just pop out the top there, and then the whole thing folds flat. You know, I'm gonna be given this card by hand, so I'll be able to kind of explain what you do with it. If you're worried that someone may not know, then it might be worth dropping some instructions inside. Just, you know, just push that bit down or something. But now I wanna make the envelope, because I've got a little bit overhanging here, and this overhangs the top, I'm actually gonna make my envelope a little bit bigger. So if you do keep it all within that size, then it will fit in a five by seven standard envelope. But I'm actually gonna follow the one here for the five and a half by seven and a half. So it's telling me I need a piece of 10 and a half by 10 and a half, which I've already cut from the Secret Garden collection. This is really nice paper. It's got all like the mint and the tarragon and well, all the herbs all over it. So I just thought it, you know, it was all in keeping. So this one here is telling me that I need to do my first score line at four and a half inches. So I'm gonna pop it in here, line it up with the four and a half punch and score. Don't worry if it doesn't go all the way down. Then I'm going to work on the opposite side and then on this side I'm just going to slide it along until that meets there and score and then again the opposite side like so. Now I'm just going to fold and burnish all of the score lines. I'm going to just add some tape to the two short sides. If you are not delivering this by hand then I would highly recommend that you pop it into a box envelope and I will link my box envelopes up here because I've got the 5x7 and 6x6 versions there but now this is one of my bouncy envelopes so I can just pop that up pop it in here and you can see it's got plenty of room nothing's catching um, I'll be careful of my little handles there don't get squashed but I'm now going to just bring these over and they will wrap around all the dimension on the card so I call these a bouncy envelope. So I'm just going to bring this over and just kind of tack it across there. Take the card back out, pop it over and push, put your hand in there and just push down on that glue. But now we've got a bouncy envelope and it's perfect for when you're hand delivering a dimensional card and you don't really want to make a box for it all. But now that will slide in there perfectly. And then all I've got to do is put some tape on there and that is all ready now for me to give. That is today's bench fold card. I've thoroughly enjoyed making this. I do hope it inspires you to make your own and I look forward to seeing what you share over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. As always, I'll try and share as many of the links to the product that I've used today in the description box below and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye.